So, hello and welcome to another video. Where are we and what are we doing? We're back at Fenland Fishery and we're back on Willow Lake. Uh, I've been itching to get back here. It's three weeks since I was last here. Anyway, I arrived yesterday. I arrived at two o'clock uh, and I had a good look round. I spent at least two hours looking around. And these fish, I tell you, I know it's winter and I know it's harder to spot them in the winter, but I seen absolutely nothing. No bubblers, no shows, no subtle movements, anything at all, apart from one fish. Um, and this one fish that I did see, it's in a no fishing area. Um, there's a back bay here to my left. Uh, it's roped off uh, and you're not allowed to fish in it. But I was up a tree there uh, and I managed to see a fish swimming around. It looked a good, a good fish as well, about 20 pound. Um, so yeah, I've come as closest I could get to that, uh, which is peg 20. And I've got one rod fishing, it's sort of like a little channel uh, before it goes into, into that bay. I've got one rod in there, uh, and then I've found a nice deep margin spot for my middle rod. Uh, it's eight foot there in the margin, so I'm thinking, you know, they could be hiding out in the margins instead of out in open water. And then my third rod, I put that out in open water and I put that at uh, 15 wraps. Uh, again, that's a good spot, a nice hard spot. So that's where we're at. Baiting approach, I didn't want to go in too heavy. I've gone more higher track this time. Uh, it didn't really work for me last time, but I, I do think it was the temperature conditions that was against me. Uh, so yeah, little micro pellets, and I've heavily gloved them in beta stim. Uh, and we've also got the boily crumb in there as well. So that's my approach. Again, the hook baits are the same, the LM94. Uh, I've got one on a wafter and a couple on pop-ups. Um, that's just to see whether, you know, they are spooking off the pop-ups and they prefer it on the deck. It's just so I've got not all my eggs in one basket, so to speak. So yeah, the, the light quickly run out on me. I spent a good couple of hours looking round and uh, I managed to find my spots and by the time I come to get my rods out, it was dark. So this is why I'm talking to you now. But weather conditions, you could not ask for better weather conditions for this time of year. Um, the pressure's right down into the 900s. We've got strong winds of up to 50 mile an hour. Uh, and temperature wise, we're in, we're sort of like high, high lows, so to speak. Um, yesterday was in double figures. We had 12 degrees yesterday. I could not believe it. 
um, but today we've got sort of highs of six and eight so it's really mild for this time of year uh, and that is going to continue for the rest of the session um, if anything the last night's going to be the coldest it's going to drop down to about two or three degrees if, the, if, it, if it's right so yeah it is absolutely pucker if i could pick any time to come cart fishing in the winter it would be now uh, and normally i don't get chance to come when the weather's good because uh, i can only come when i can come so to be here is a double thumbs up on that one let me tell you so just before light it come good this morning i've got one in the retainer so the tactics have worked uh, one thing that I haven't mentioned is I'm on the back of the wind here as well so it was kind of like an obvious choice to choose really because with them 50 mile an hour winds pushing straight down the bottom end of the lake you'd expect the fish to be on the back of it and as it turns out I was right it's nice to get something right for a change um, but it's the open water rod that's gone I was quite surprised if I'd have had to put my money on any going it would have been that one next to the no fishing area so yeah, let's get this fish out. Well, it's certainly a character, as they like to call them. He's got a bit of a funny-shaped mouth, to be honest. I'm really surprised at the hook hole that I got. I've got him in the bottom lip, and he was absolutely nailed, but... <clears throat> he does look like he's seen a few hooks in his time. Quite a long fish. Uh, 26 pound for he's just gone. Whoa. go yes god this fish is absolutely freezing my hands are killing me already but I am very happy indeed very happy I don't know if you can see his mouth there you see his mouth it's ever such a funny shape definitely got character I'll show the other side quickly He's giving me a soaking. And there he is, look. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. LM94 pop up. Pucker. My slipping back.
evening's drawing in quite quickly now and um, we're just coming up to five o'clock so I'd imagine it'll be dark in about 15-20 minutes but the days are getting uh, lighter or should I say the nights are getting lighter um, not much to report for today though it's been fairly quiet I've been watching the water a lot and I've not seen anything I did have an occurrence about half an hour ago though I had a little liner on the right hand rod a couple of bleeps, a bobbin pulled up and then dropped back down it was definitely a liner so that's pretty promising I've changed things slightly, I've got two rods on the open water spot now uh, and I've repositioned the left hand rod that's in the bay I've actually moved it um, a bit further around the corner there's a route that comes out from under the tree and I was a bit concerned and with the line lay going over it or around the side of it or whatever so I've just made sure I've got my rod tip well past it uh, one of the locals come round earlier and he says if they do get in there he says you can have it away he says, but, you know, it's one of them spots, they're either there or they're not. So I'd have thought if there was there, I'd have had a bite by now. But you just never know, they might turn up. Because there's a few anglers turned up today, there's another three anglers gone down the left-hand bank. So if there is any fish about, you know, they were spawning out and stuff, so you never know, it might get the fish moving about a bit more. But I've kept everything minimal again, um, still I've not put any bait in, I'm just fishing the mesh bags. I've actually switched my rigs for this session, I've gone over onto the fluorocarbon rigs. Um, it's not stiff fluorocarbon, it's, it's supple, um, it's like real line so to speak. It's pure fluorocarbon, it's good stuff, um, <laughs> you drop it in the water and it's invisible, you can't see it. Uh, and I've also switched the hooks. I've actually gone onto the uh, corder wide gapes. They're a finer gauge hook than what I have been using. Yeah, them straight points that I have been using, they're a really thick gauge and in your mind you just think if them fish are not moving about much, you know, you want all them percentages in your favour rather than against it. Sorry about that, I just had a visitor. Yeah, seems to be quite a lot of people uh, walking around today. Nice chap. So yeah, where was I? Yeah, hooks, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I switched onto the corda wide gate hooks because um, they're a finer gauge and in my mind they're going to go in a lot easier than a thicker gauge hook if the fish are not moving about much. And it seems to me that the fish are not moving about much because you'd be getting more liners if it was moving about. It'd be interesting to see with them other guys that's gone down there if they have anything. Um, trouble is all the right hand side of the bank is empty. The fish could just move over there. I mean it was ever so strange last time I come and I'm chucking the deeper out and I could not find a shoal of fish. That's unheard of with the deeper at this time of year. <clears throat> it's a very very good tool to have in your armory especially in the winter because you can turn up to a lake and make a few casts and you know identify where the fish are not that I've done it that much to be honest I always use my eyes first I always walk the lake and it's only when I'm struggling when the deeper comes out Last time I went on the advice of the bailiff and he, he said, you know, get in swim 12 or 13 because the fish hold up in the centre of the lake. That uh, guy that I was speaking to as well, the, the regular, um, he fishes here quite a lot and he says they haven't been having maggots this year, which is surprising. He says, yeah, if you can get them going on the maggots, he says you can really have it away. He says, but they've been very, how can you put it, on and off with the maggots. He says he's caught more fish on boilie this year. Well, this winter, should I say. He said he had a good session in December in the swim I'm in as well. He said he had seven fish. But that was before the freeze and everything. Yeah, I just really hope 
that we get another wake up in the morning from a carpus interruptus I am feeling confident though it's always nice to have a liner at least you know there's something about and having a fish as well where there's one there's usually more at this time of year they normally swim together Anyway, I'm going to stop waffling on. I'm going to put some tea on. I'm going to have some new potatoes and chicken chilli tonight. I'm absolutely starving. All I've had is a sausage sandwich today. <laughs> I've been constantly on it all day. I don't mean as in like keeping busy casting and things like that. I mean watching the water and thinking. So yeah, I'll speak to you very soon. Well, it's just gone 10 o'clock and the same rod's gone again. Um, again the same approach, I've not changed anything, in fact they're out there from when I recast them earlier um, but a little subtle take and the bobbin just slid away and I've got one just shy of the £30 mark, uh, £29.10 is gone so I can't quite claim it but I'm sure you'll agree he is an absolute minter He's still lively. There we go. Absolutely pucker. I made up with that. Ooh. He's got some beans in him. Another LM94 muncher. Sweet. Oh, see if he'll behave and I'll show you the other side quickly. Ooh. Yes, get in there. I don't think the light's doing this fish much justice to be honest because he looks rather pale from what I'm looking at. But I can assure you he's got plenty of colour to him. Oh, he's made my trip. Absolutely made up. Let's slip him back. <sighs> to bivy cam yes we are confined to the bivy um, it's been raining most of the night um, but condition wise it, it, it was pretty good last night and with having that fish quite early on I was quite expectant of another bite but it just didn't happen um, but when I got up this morning I was looking at the line lay on that rod that's done both of the bites and it looked like it was slightly off spot um, so I've recast that now um, the right hand rod, I did have a couple of liners on that, but I'm still yet to pick up a fish on that rod. Um, that rod's actually fishing in the silt, and the, bite, the, the spot that I'm getting the bites off is actually on a hard spot, and then the right hand rod is just off of that spot. It's at the same distance, but it's just off of it in the silt. So I'm thinking of a change on that rod for tonight. I'm thinking of pulling it a bit closer to me, um, and seeing if I can find a firmer spot. 
Uh, obviously, I'm still going to keep that one on, on the main spawn. And I'm still going to keep that one in the bay there. I forgot to mention that I changed that rod onto a solid bag um, with an inline drop off uh, and a little, uh, what I call the one up rig. Uh, it's a good little rig that for the winter. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's stiff, you want a stiff like two inch hook link basically uh, and then you strip half of it away and you put a split shot in the middle and it just creates a little hinge. Um, I'd only use that in the winter though, um, when the fish are not really picking up baits with gusto because I do think, you know, bigger fish tend to hover over and suck it up, you need a bit more length to nail them. Um, but I do like using that in the winter, it's uh, done me crown, or should I say it's done me justice in past winters that day. So yeah, back to the fishing, the weatherman's got it wrong, the wind has actually swung round, it's coming into my face now and the temperature's dropping tonight uh, and the air pressure is rising as well it's going back over the thousand mark tonight so the weatherman wasn't 100% right but we can't fault him for that can we we've still had a good session regardless of what happens tonight so yeah until something carpy happens I'm gonna leave it there <laughs> having a bit of a lull in the weather at the moment the winds dropped it's also swung round as well it's going across the lake now from left to right um, then three guys that was on the left hand bank have packed up uh, they haven't had anything I'm really surprised because they're cast into the same sort of area where I've had the bites off it seems to be just that one spot where I'm getting the bites if it's not on that hard spot it's a clay spot if it's not on it I'm not getting a bite I'm in my right hand rod it must have only been four yards away from it I'm um, fishing in the silt and I get the liners on that rod but no bites so what I've done is I've switched it, I've gone to the left hand side of the spot now rather than the right. It's still silt but it's much firmer. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. I'm just going to leave it there for the rest of today. I might recast it, I found another spot at 10 wraps out to the right hand side of me. Um, so I've got that as a backup if need be. But I thought just for today, while it's like this, it's looking good for a bite. I'm going to leave it there. This is really, really carpy, these conditions now. It's a shame the pressure's rising. Because it looks bang on for a bite. It really does. I'm really glad that wind swung round. I hate sitting with the bivvy door closed. Hate it. Seems really peaceful sat here now. All I can hear is the birds and the raindrops. It's lovely, absolutely lovely. It's the little things in carp fishing that keep you going. 
For me it's them early mornings, I love the early mornings. Especially when the air temperature is colder than the lake and you get all that mist rolling off. I absolutely love that. But I do also like catching a few fish as well. So it's been a pretty good session. Just really hope we could connect with one more, one more before I go. Just put the icing on the cake, so to speak. I don't think this lull in the weather is going to last long. Um, it says on the weather app uh, at 3 o'clock we are due some torrential rain until about 6 o'clock. Um, but then after 6 o'clock it's meant to stop raining. It's going to be dry all night. Uh, which also means a dry pack down in the morning. Which is always a bonus. So yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully, I'll be back to you very shortly with something to report. Well, we're just about coming into darkness now. Uh, it's just gone half past five. Um, I had a bit of an occurrence earlier on the channel rod um, that's fishing towards that bay. Uh, my two liners quite close together uh, got the old ticker going. That did. I thought a few fish had moved into the area. I was uh, sitting here watching it re religiously for about half an hour, quite expectant of a bite, but nothing's come of it. I'm not going to recast, I'm going to leave it there. I don't want to risk spooking anything that could possibly be there. The same with the two that are fishing out to that spot over there. The only reason why I don't want to recast them is I don't want to put extra baiting on the spot. Um, they're quite big mesh bags that I'm using and to be honest it looks like quite a lot of bait earlier when it was uh, raining one of them got you know a bit damaged and I couldn't cast it out so I just chucked it in the margin uh, and it's actually quite surprising you know just how big it actually looks yeah on some lakes in the winter I actually go down to really little bags I use the 18 mil mesh um, fish them about 50 pence piece size you know when you want to make regular casts and search the water but because I'm not doing that on this session you know I'm still spot fishing I still want to get it back on that same spot with a, quite a bit of bait so yeah I'm not too sure how tonight's going to pan out with the changing conditions the wind's been changing most of the day to be honest, it keeps blowing to the right and then it keeps coming back towards me and then it'll go to the right again. Um, but the temperature has already started to drop, which it was forecast. It's supposed to drop to minus one, minus two tonight. So we'll have to see how the uh, fishing fares for tonight. But, you know, it's on that spot, and it landed nicely on that spot. It's done me a bite on the last two nights. Well, I say nights, one was early morning, but it was still in darkness. Fingers crossed. I don't think that um, channel rod will do a bite in the night. I think that's more of a daytime spot. But we shall see, we shall see. I'll keep you posted if anything carpy happens. Everyone, 
Well, I wish I could say it was a good morning, um, but we've had a disastrous night. A couple of occurrences. First of all, eight o'clock, uh, the left-hand rod pulled up tight. Just a couple of bleeps and the bobbin was touching the rod and I lifted into fresh air. So whether that was a liner or not, I'm not really sure. But when I brought the rig back in, I inspected it. The silicon hadn't moved and the hook point was still totally fine. So I got that rod back out and then a couple of hours later at 10 o'clock, the right hand rod absolutely went into meltdown. Um, I mean the other couple of takes that I've had have all been twitchy takes, just the bobbin pulling up tight and then slowly ticking off line. But this thing was going. Um, I lifted into it, it felt like quite a fast moving fish to be honest. Had it on for a good five minutes and then a hook pull, a disaster. I was absolutely wounded. Um, it's a good job it did feel like a small fish because it makes it a bit easier to swallow. Uh, but on bringing the rig back in and inspecting it, the hook point was dinked over. Um, but that's a point I'd like to make as well. Uh, something I've noticed, the fish in here have got really hard mouths. Uh, and each fish I've hooked, the hook point has been dinked over. So that's something worth considering if you're gonna come in here, come here in the future. Um, if I was coming back here, I think there is one change I would like to make. Uh, some people might think I'm a bit bonkers for doing this, but I, I'd go on barbless hooks, the same pattern, they're a good sharp hook, um, but I would move to barbless, I, you know, it just goes in that little bit easier. But like I said, it's all these percentages that add up into your favour. I know people keep saying this on social media a lot, but it really does make a difference. Uh, and the other thing, the length of the rig, uh, I'm, I'm going to lengthen it by an inch. Yeah, so next time I'm back, I mean, I was due to come back in a couple of weeks time, but I'm actually going to the Northern Angling Show, I'm working on the Castaway Stand there. So if you are attending the Castaway Stand, pop over, say hello, it'd be nice to meet you. Uh, I'm sure I'll be able to uh, sort you out a good deal as well on some PVA if you wanted. So yeah, I don't think anything else is going to happen this morning. I've missed my chance, I was absolutely gutted. But you know, it's February, we've had three bites and landed two lovely fish. Uh, you know, what more can I ask for? So yeah, if you're new to this channel, don't forget, subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of thing. And I'll see you on the bank sometime.